This is a Rutke Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods, and welcome to episode 26 of my Mac Pro series. In this episode, I will be showing you the hard way to install NVIDIA's web drivers. Now, if you want to watch the easy way to do this, where we use a supported GPU alongside our new GPU, you can click this link right here to watch episode 25. And also, if you need to know what a web driver is to begin with, you can click this episode right here to watch the video about that. Now, when I say that this is the hard way to do it, I'm talking about using your supported card to install the drivers and then removing it to put your new card in. Without installing the drivers first, your new card will not work and you'll just have a black screen. Now, I would not recommend doing this, but there's some practical reasons why you may have to, in case you possibly need an extra PCI slot. It frees up one slot. Also, if you don't have a single slot video card like I do, and it happens to be one of the power hungry cards that needed at least one power connector, you may also want to do this too. But I would recommend just buying a single slot card supported by the Mac, aka a GT120 or a HD2600 XT from ATI, aka AMD today. The reason why is it's much easier to have a supported video card, especially when we're updating the driver. And I'll explain that further into the video. I would recommend getting one of those. And with the GT120, you have to be careful because NVIDIA's EFI flash for it, if it's the stock original Apple card, is only for 64-bit EFI Macs. And if you are using a 32-bit EFI Mac, the video card will not work. So, if you're wanting to use a GT120, you need to make sure it is flashed for 32-bit EFI. If you're using the HD2600, don't worry about it. All AMD cards work in 32-bit EFI Mac Pros. So, let's continue. We'll hop over to the desktop and I'll explain to you what we need to do from there. Okay, so that this video isn't any longer than it has to be, I would recommend you clicking this link right here to watch the section in episode 25 where I explain things about downloading the driver and some details about what it says on the page. And once you download that driver, we will pick up right here. We will want to install the driver. Click continue, continue, agree, install. Type in your password, hit enter. It will ask if it's okay to restart. We click continue installation. It installs the files. Once it's installed, we click restart, let the system restart, and I'll pick up once it restarts. Once the system is restarted, we will want to go up to the NVIDIA icon right here, click and make sure that the NVIDIA web driver is enabled. Once we make sure that is all set, we need to turn off our Mac, click shut down, and let it shut off. Okay, so now we will want to install our new graphics card and make sure that we connect our power connectors. Once we're sure that those are connected and everything is all set, we can start our computer back up. Okay, so now we can start our Mac back up. We click the power button. The boot sound starts up. And then we can go over to the screen and notice that everything is black. This is because we have installed a PC card into our Mac. And because of this, we cannot see the EFI screens. So we can't see the boot up screen. We can't see the boot menu. So to go to a different operating system like Windows 
or even another copy of uh, Mac OS, we will have to go into the startup disk settings in our preferences, which is a pretty big problem, especially if you're having problems with your boot camp drivers in Windows, because you have to have a working control panel to be able to choose what startup operating system you want in Windows. And if that control panel doesn't work, you can't boot back into your other operating systems. There's other problems too. Whenever there's a new security update or even a new version of OS X that comes out, you have to wait for the drivers to be updated before you can update to them. Because when a build is changed, the drivers no longer work because these are specifically written for one copy of OS X slash Mac OS and that's it. So if there's a new update, the driver will no longer work when you update and the screen will go black and you'll have to put your original card back in. Well, to do an update to begin with, you'll have to put your original card back in. So you can't get rid of your original card. So when all is said and done, it is beneficial to have two cards running in your Mac and have one running on a cheap, crappy screen like this. You don't have to have it all fancy. This cost me $20. In fact, this monitor right here cost me $10 from Goodwill. And you could use either one of those. It doesn't have to be a fancy monitor as long as it can plug into your originally supported card. You're good. And it fixes all the problems you'd have otherwise. Anyway, so that is the end of this episode. And thank you for watching. This has been a Rutke Mods video.